Good day, brethren. You are welcome to RCCG New Covenant Parish's Open Heavens Daily Devotional. The Open Heavens Daily Devotional is written by our Father and the Lord, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. A. Adeboye. And I pray that as you join me today, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Today, 16th March 2024, we are looking at the topic, Live self- Selflessly. Our memory verse is taken from Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, which says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Our text is taken from Genesis 50, verse 15 to 21. It says, And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure it us, and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, so shall he say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren, and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Our passage says, The twenty-four elders in heaven made it clear into this memory verse that we are created to fulfill God's pleasure. When we live for ourselves alone, we negate the purpose of our existence. When a person lives for God, he or she would not abuse any privilege or opportunity. Joseph is a good example of someone who lived for God and his fellow human beings, particularly his brothers. Even though they eventually repaid him with evil, his selfless service made him go the extra mile to find them and deliver their food to them when he couldn't locate them initially. He could have returned home with the supplies he took with him, but he didn't. You can find the story in Genesis 37, verse 13 to 28. Joseph's love for God caused him to reject the sexual advances of his master's wife. He could not bear doing anything that would displease God. And this made him say in Genesis 39, verse 9, There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So, we are made to understand that um, we live for God's pleasure and we do not live for ourselves. We are created for God's pleasure and we are not called to live our lives for ourselves alone. We are to live for God and we are also to live for the benefit of other people around us. So if you are living for God, you definitely not abuse any opportunity or privilege that is granted to you. A good example which we looked at in our Bible text was Joseph. Joseph was a good person because when his father sent him to, you know, check on the welfare of his brothers and he didn't find them initially, he could have returned back home and said, well, I didn't find them. But he kept pushing and pushing until he find, found them where they are. But his brethren, you know, um, they, they repaid his evil, his good with evil. And even in captivity, even in captivity, he had the advantage or he had the opportunity to take advantage of his master by sleeping with his master's wife. But he refused because he feared God. He refused because he understood that he was not living for himself alone. He was also living to please God and did not want to hurt his master also. So we see Joseph as an example of someone who lived selflessly. He was not thinking about himself. He was not thinking about his own desires. He was not thinking about his own comfort. He was thinking about God, how he will, how he will fulfill God's commandments. And he was thinking about his master. He was thinking about his brothers. Furthermore, his love for people made him interpret the dreams of his fellow inmates, which led him becoming, which led him to becoming the prime minister of Egypt. When he eventually came into power, he did not consider the hardships he endured due to the cruelty of his brothers when they sold him into slavery. The love of God in him made him realize that his suffering served a higher purpose for God and humanity. He said in Genesis 50 verse 20, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. So, 
even when uh, his brothers had done evil to him and he became prime minister, he did not repay them back for the evil they did to him. Rather, I saw it as an opportunity to even serve on a global scale, to serve um, when time of hardship had come. He didn't repay them for you know the bad things or the evil things that they had done for him in the past. He saw those sufferings as an opportunity for God to take him to a position where he could serve humanity. So all through Joseph's life, he was living selflessly. He was not considering just himself. Our Father in heaven wants us to live a selfless life so that we can attain the fullness of his purpose for our lives. Those who are selfish should change themselves without knowing it. Moses, even though he lived in affluence in Pharaoh's palace, decided to suffer with his brethren, the Israelites, and eventually saved them from bondage by leading them out of Egypt. Hebrews 11, 24-27 His selflessness ensured that he fulfilled God's purpose for his life and the nation of Israel at large. Beloved, begin to live beyond yourself and you have the fullness of God's grace to divinely prosper both spiritually and physically. So, we also see an example of Moses, who though he was raised in the palace, he was not just thinking of himself because he was an Hebrew. But was not just thinking of himself, he was thinking about his brethren that were also suffering. And, you know, he tried to do something about it and eventually was the one that led, led them out of bondage. It was his selflessness that helped him fulfill God's purpose for his life. So I want us to begin to think of more than ourselves. I want us to begin to think of how we can serve others, how we can serve God. I want us to think not only of how we can acquire property, how we can acquire influence, how we can do things just to serve ourselves. We should think of how we can live selflessly and benefit humanity. In so doing, God will be able to use us for his glory and use us at a, at a scale that even we cannot imagine. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. A prayer point says, Father, from today, please help me to live selflessly in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Lord, we want to say thank you for your word that has come to us today. We ask, Lord, that from today, you help us to live selflessly. Help us not to just think of ourselves and our own comfort, but Lord, to think of others and to think of you and your kingdom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you.